I welcome you all in this course on <laughs> steam and gas power systems and today we will discuss binary vapor cycle and cogeneration. In today's uh, lecture we will be covering supercritical uh, Rankine cycle, binary vapor cycle and cogeneration. Now, in the last lecture as we discussed that when we increase the pressure or boiler pressure of the uh, cycle in, in a Rankine cycle, the, uh, the efficiency of the cycle improves. So, this is a typical uh, superheated vapor Rankine cycle 1, 2, sorry, 2, 3, 4 and then 5 and 6. This is temperature and entropy. Now, if I want to improve the efficiency of the cycle, I will have to increase the boiler pressure, either boiler pressure or reduce the condenser pressure. Now, if I increase the boiler pressure, the net temperature of heat addition will increase and I will get more output from the turbine. In some of the cases, in some of the uh, power plants, thermal power plants, the pressure is increased beyond the critical temperature. This is the critical temperature. Critical temperature of steam is approximately 374.95 degree centigrade and this critical pressure is approximately 22 uh, mega Pascal, 221 uh, bar. And if the vapor is pressurized beyond this point, I mean the heating takes place like this. So, the boiler will be operating beyond the critical point and the, the, boil, the, the, the system or the cycle becomes the supercritical cycle. So, supercritical cycle, the heat addition in the fluid takes place beyond the critical point. Rest of the processes are same there is no change in the rest of the processes. Only change is the, uh, the pressure of heat addition in the working fluid. Now, after this uh, supercritical Rankine cycle, we will come to the binary vapor cycle. When we say in supercritical cycle, when we are operating at high pressure, definitely the, uh, the design of the boiler has to be very robust, right. And for robust design, I mean thicker plates will have to be used and in overall cost of the plant is high, right. Now, instead of doing this, if we replace uh, steam or water vapor by some other fluid, right and with some other fluid which has very high normal boiling point. Now, what is normal boiling point? Normal boiling point is the boiling point of the fluid at one atmospheric pressure, right. So, at one atmospheric pressure, at one atmospheric pressure, the normal boil point, boiling point of the water is let us say 100 degree centigrade. So, we can, we should go for a fluid which has higher normal boiling point. If suppose any fluid is having a normal boiling point of 200 degree centigrade. So, we will not have to go for higher pressure. The, the system can work on relatively lower pressure and the cost of the plant can be reduced and further <coughs> the efficiency of the system will also increase. Now, in the case of uh, binary vapor cycle, the binary word has come because we are using two fluids. One fluid is water, one is water, another can be either of these three, but normally which is in B practice that is mercury, mercury is used. I will show you the thermophysical properties of the mercury. The mercury has normal boiling point of 356, normal boiling point of mercury is 356.73 degree centigrade, that is the normal boiling point of the mercury. So, in binary vapor cycle, what is exactly done? I will show you the schematic arrangement or arrangement on temperature entropy diagram. There are two cycles which are operating. 
वन इज मर्करी साइकिल और लेट से इट इज सुपर हीटेड और सेचुरेटेड डजेंट मेक एनी डिफरेंस सेचुरेटेड दैट इज वन साइकिल सो वन टू x is equal to 1 x is equal to 0 temperature entropy so 1 2 3 4 5 this is mercury cycle this is <laughs> working on high temperature now another cycle which is steam cycle and this cycle is working at lower temperature because normal boiling point of water is much less than the normal boiling point of this those so five this is 6 7 8 9 10 and this is 11 so arrangement is made that heat rejected during this process 2 to 3 it doesn't go wasted so the heat rejected in this process 2 to 3 is used for generating steam in process 9 10 11 6 6 so they are coupled so heat in rejected during process 2 to 3 does not get wasted whatever heat is rejected it is it is taken away by the steam which is flowing in it. so there is a heat exchanger the arrangement is like this from one side this vapor mercury vapor enters from the other side uh, the uh, the the high pressure water enters and heat exchange takes place and water is converted into the steam and this vapor of mercury gets condensed so we have two cycles if you look at the thermophysical properties of these two fluids they are very interesting mercury at 0.07 uh, pressure the temperature is 236.5 236.5 let us take uh, temperature at 0.07 bar or 7 kilo pascal at 7 kilo pascal the mercury is uh, 236.5 and water is 0.07 39 degree centigrade even at 12.7 bar the water is at, is at only 190.5 degree centigrade where mercury as 12.7 is 537.5 it is quite high so mercury cycle even if it is working at here it is 12.7 so if it is suppose it is working at 15 bar or or 14 bar it will cross 600 degree centigrade temperature but the system will work relatively higher lower pressure in comparison to the case of water at the same temperature now look at other properties height of the liquid that is 32 point sorry sorry enthalpy of the liquid that is 32.4 here 163.35 right enthalpy of the vapor here enthalpy of the vapor is 2571.7 water is a unique fluid which has i mean very high latent heat in comparison to the other chemicals or other fluids available it is typically very high for water for other fluids for example refrigerants the latent heat is of the order of 160 170 or 200 but for water the latent heat goes up to 2200 or 2300 kJ per kg here also you can see for mercury the enthalpy of the vapor is only 360 enthalpy of saturated vapor at 12.7 bar is only 360.74 Uh, kilojoules per kg however in the case of water it is 27 2785.7 kilojoules per kg so if you compare the thermophysical properties ther so as far as the energy content is concerned wa water turns out to be much superior than uh, mercury but the property of the mercury is the normal boiling point normal boiling point is 356.73 degree centigrade So, if we take mercury, the mercury will boil. If we start heating the mercury, the mercury will boil at the temperature of five three fifty six point seven three degrees centigrade. So, now uh, let us take one example. I mean, solve try to solve a numerical. In a binary vapor cycle, the mercury vapor entering the turbine is dry and saturated at twelve point seven bar. So, here we will be putting the values. 
it is 12.7 bar right and condenser pressure of mercury is 0 0.07 this is 0 0.07 bar the steam cycle operates between the pressure 30 bar this is 30 bar and the condenser pressure in the steam cycle is also 0 0.07 bar and and the steam is superheated to 350 degree centigrade so t6 is 350 degree centigrade right and if you compare the properties this properties of uh, no properties of mercury is not here okay so <coughs> we will adopt the same process i can give you some uh, numerical values we will adopt the same process to find the output of this cycle I, I think there should not be any problem in finding out the output of this cycle if we have the thermophysical properties at a saturation points like at this point and this point and this point for mercury right as we have done in the previously we can here also we can find the efficiency of this cycle or output of this cycle similar manner we can find the output of this cycle as well right and the net output of the cycle net output of the system is going to be net output of the system will is going to be so, sorry net output net output of the system is going to be how much h1 minus h2 plus S 6 minus H 7 per kg of respective fluid. It is possible that here the mass flow rate here is different from the mass flow rate in this cycle. I am just taking per kg of uh, circulating fluid and efficiency how much heat is added? Heat is added only in this process that is it because heat addition in this process is through rejection of heat in the previous cycle right if we do this <laughs> uh, sort of clubbing of or coupled cycle the efficiency of the system also improves i will show you how how the efficiency of the coupled cycle is improved let us take a, a carnot cycle let's start with the carnot cycle let us take a carnot cycle 1 efficiency of 1 is 1 minus q2 by q1 q2 is in this carnot cycle the q2 is heat rejected q1 is heat supplied so 1 by 1 minus q2 by q1 will be the efficiency of this cycle now another cycle which is using this as source of heat rejected heat efficiency of 2 is going to be is it clear so here q2 is going to be equal to 1 minus efficiency of 1 multiplied by q1 right and here q3 is going to be 1 minus efficiency of 2 multiplied by q2 Now, another cycle which is operating between 1 and 3. Now, the, if you take this coupled cycle, now the coupled cycle efficiency, overall efficiency of this coupled cycle is cycle working between 1 and 3. So, it is Q3 by Q1, right, is equal to 1 minus Q2, 1 minus q1 q2 again you can put is equal to 1 minus yeah, here i'll do uh, so overall efficiency is going to be equal to 1 minus efficiency of 1 
divided by efficiency of 2, multiplied by efficiency of 2, this is q 2 and divided by q 1 and this is also q 1. This q 1 and q 1 will be cancelled out. So, 1 minus overall efficiency is equal to 1 minus efficiency of 1 multiplied by 1 minus efficiency of 2. Now, here coupling has been done and efficient or and if you have n number of cycles, then it will keep on going efficiency of 3 multiplied by 1 minus efficiency of 4, 5 and so on. Now, 1 minus efficiency of O, we can multiply this, this is 1 minus efficiency of 1, uh, this is 1 minus efficiency of 1 minus efficiency of 2 plus efficiency of 1, efficiency of 2, if there are 2 cycles. Then we can say the overall efficiency is efficiency of 1 plus efficiency of 2 minus efficiency of 1, efficiency of 2, right. Now, if we take first efficiency is 40 percent, another is 50 percent. So, first cycle in coupled cycle, first cycle efficiency is 40 percent and this is 50 percent. So, overall efficiency is going to be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5 minus 0 0.4 into 0 0.5. That is going to be equal to 0 0.9 minus 0 0.2 is equal to 0 0.7 or 70 percent. So, individual cycle efficiency was 40 percent and 50 percent, but we have coupled the cycle, the efficiency has increased to 70 percent. Now, in addition to this, now after this, there are certain advantages of uh, binary vapor cycle. In binary vapor cycle, when mercury is used, if we take combination of mercury and water and mercury is used for high pressure cycle, then in at high temperature, the pressure uh, of mercury is moderate. For example, at 540 degree centigrade temperature, the pressure of the mercury is less than 14 bar. The mercury is stable at uh, high temperature, that is another advantage of using mercury in this cycle. In addition to this, liquid mercury has high density and therefore, the separation of liquid and vapor in case of mercury is easier. The feedback to the boiler by hysteresis, the mercury can be fed to the boiler by hydrostatic head only, the pump is not required in this case. If you want to feed mercury in the boiler, through hydrostatic pressure only the mercury can be fed because the density of the mercury is very high. The mercury can be sent to the boiler under hydrostatic head because the density of the mercury is high. So, pump uh, can be eliminated, pump which is used for uh, increasing pressure of the fluid which is coming from the condenser to the pressure of the boiler, that pump can be eliminated. and the mercury can be fed into the boiler through hydrostatic pressure or a hydrostatic head. The specific heat of the mercury is very low. It is only 0 0.13 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. Uh, if you remember the specific heat of water is 4.18 kilojoules per kg Kelvin. It is more than 30 times uh, the specific heat of the mercury. So, in case of temperature and entropy diagram of our mercury, the liquid line is steeper and which makes this mercury cycle closer to the Carnot cycle. Another point in the favor of the mercury is that the specific enthalpy of mercury is low. Thus, it results in low jet velocity in mercury turbine and it is compensated by the high density of the mercury. In this cycle, in the cycle where mercury is used, the thermal efficiency of the cycle is high, it is higher than the Rankine cycle running on the steam. So, the thermal efficiency of the mercury cycle is higher than the thermal efficiency of the cycle working with steam as a working fluid. There are certain disadvantages of the use of mercury in binary cycle. 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मर्करी इज टॉक्सिक इन नेचर सेकेंडली द कॉस्ट ऑफ मर्करी इज हाई एंड द सप्लाई ऑफ मर्करी इज लिमिटेड द मर्करी इज परवेसिव सो टेंडेंसी ऑफ मर्करी टू लीक थ्रू ज्वाइंट्स एंड क्रैक्स इज वेरी हाई सो द ज्वाइंट्स एंड लीक एंड द क्रैक्स हैव टू बी प्रॉपरली रीक लीक प्रूफ अदरवाइज द मर्करी विल लीक थ्रू दिस ज्वाइंट्स एंड सिंस इट इज टॉक्सिक इन नेचर इट कैन कॉज द हेजार्ट द लेटेंट हीट ऑफ मर्करी इज वेरी लो सो फॉर जनरेशन ऑफ सेम अमाउंट ऑफ पावर high quantity of uh, uh, mercury is uh, required the contact angle of mercury is high so it does not wet the surface therefore the heat transfer in the case of mercury is poor so there are certain disadvantages of mercury using in a binary vapor cycle so what is combined heat and power chp it is known as chp chp combined heat and power in chp processes in a single process the work is done i mean uh, we extract the work shaft work from a turbine and from the same process uh, the heating process heat process heat is also taken so heating is done and the work is done by the same i will show you one such of cycle uh, one of the such cycles so it is sequential generation of two different forms of energy one is work another is heating and this heating is done in the it is sort of process heating in in the different uh, processes maybe in the mechanical or chemical industries uh, one of such arrangements can be that you have a turbine now exit of the turbine is going to the condenser and condenser to the pump this is the typical arrangement and pump to the boiler and boiler to the turbine this is a typical arrangement of a rankine cycle from turbine turbine to condenser condenser to pump and pump to boiler now in back pressure turbine what happens instead of using condenser the steam coming out of the turbine is used for some process maybe sterilization or some chemical process so steam is not condensed in the condenser and the steam goes for the process it is known as back pressure turbine even in 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 some of the sugar mills you will find this type of uh, back pressure turbine and there are many industries where it is being used so the pressure so the, the the steam coming out of the turbine does not go to the condenser it goes to for some process and process heating is done so from the same source two sequences of the processes we are getting from here we are getting the shaft output and after the shaft outputs we are doing the heating also so this is known as chp combined heating and <laughs> power generation it is also possible that the process heat after the process the water is not usable so we can provide the fresh water or after the process the water can go to the pump and cycle is completed now another type of uh, the chp is extraction condensing i mean this process the condenser is there for the process heat this the steam is extracted from a certain stage of the turbine during the expansion the steam is extracted at a particular pressure used for the process right and then after the process it is sent to the boiler through a different pump it is more of the same thing so this is known as combined in heating and power system where power is generated at the same time process heating is also done or steam can be used for some other processes and this is also known as cogeneration i end my lecture here in the next class we will be solving one numerical related with the rankine cycle